Hi and welcome to my channel. My name is Amanda. I am back once again. Same clothes, same Goodreads to talk about the books. There are 12 of them in the historical romance section of the summer romance releases. So out of these 12 books, I have managed to only pick four <laughs> that I think I want to keep going. I would say historical romance is probably my least favorite genre and that may be changing actually though because when I was reading through some of these I thought oh this is not like what I think of when I think of those old Regency romance novels that I have read in the past. They're different. But a lot of these I couldn't read because they're book two, they're book four in a series. So maybe I don't know. We'll see how it goes. There are a couple of them that I kind of want to read book one and book two that's coming out, but I don't think I'm going to have time this summer. So here's what I'm going to start with. We Could Be So Good by Cat Sebastian. It says, Colleen Hoover meets the seven husbands of Evelyn Hugo. I like I've not read The Seven Husbands of Evelyn Hugo, but I don't really like Colleen Hoover books very much. So hopefully, though, this will still be okay. But it's called a rom-drom, which I'm guessing romantic drama. I don't know. That all sounds a little bit TikTok-ish to me as well. <laughs> that word, rom-drom. Anyway, it, it doesn't matter. It is a newspaper reporter and the newspaper mogul's son. And the son wants to, he can't keep up with anything. He can't do anything. So they send him to the very bottom and he agrees to work in like the mail room at the bottom job of the newspaper. And there he meets Nick and apparently they develop a friendship, but they can't really do anything else because this is mid-century so around the 1950s yes and it says but the late 1950s are a hostile time for gay men and Nick knows that he can't let anyone into his life so this is about Nick and Andy and what they do and how they navigate the 1950s so that sounds good on my list I have read Alexis Hall books before but I can't remember what books I read from them so we'll just say that I've read some and I don't know. This one is magical. So I don't know why this is not in the paranormal romance or the fantasy romance. But anyway, somebody is ha has had some kind of spell put on them by the fairies or the what do they call it? Swarming fairy spirits, interfering deities and actual straight up sorcerers. <laughs> so Miss Mitchellmore has had this curse put on her and she goes to talk to Georgiana Landrake who may have murdered her own father and brothers to inherit their fortune so she goes to talk to her to try to figure out what in the world is going on with this curse and if she can get it removed and apparently they fall in love we'll see I have not read a historical book by Alexis Hall but I'm gonna pick this one up then, this is the first in a series, Unladylike Lessons in Love. I love the cover of this book. I think it is so pretty. Anyway, it says, she takes us on a journey from the pleasure gardens of society to the dangerous streets of 19th century London in this spectacular romantic debut by an unforgettable new voice. And then a quote from the main character says, women mind their reputation if they want to marry. I don't want to marry. So... That explains who she is and what she does. And so she's running this gaming club. Not running it. She works as a hostess for this gaming club. And her father, first of all, her dad is an earl, but he had an Indian mistress. And so she came from that. And she and her sisters were taken from India and, and moved to England never having a choice about it and so she's like we never fit in of course and nobody accepted us and so now she is dealing with that but then she meets this guy who is accusing her of actually being his father's mistress and she's like no but I can show you some stuff and so as they go through the rest of the stuff that's happening they fall in love and it's the Marley sisters number one so I'm assuming that the rest of her sisters because they were all in India and had to come to England so I guess the rest of the books are going to be about the other sisters so I'm getting in on book number one of this one <laughs> and we'll see what I think about it and finally the last one that I never would have picked up based on the cover like the cover is not is not cute to me 
I don't know. I just don't like it. But they hooked me with the detective. The detective hook, I guess, of this one. That she loses her dad's pocket watch. Her dad's pocket watch is stolen. And so she goes to the newspaper and finds something called a thief taker, which I guess is like a person who finds things that have been stolen. And he comes and they discover that it's not just that pocket watch. There's a lot of things that are going on and he's helping her figure them all out. He's pretending to be her cousin. I thought for a minute he was going to pretend to be her like estranged fiance or something. And I was going to be like, yes, it's fake dating. But no, he's pretending to be her cousin. Anyway, that's okay. I, the premise sounded good enough for me to overlook the cover so I'm jumping in. So those are my four historical romances that I'm going to be reading over the summer. And we will check back in at the end of the summer and I'll tell you how they go. I don't know if any of you guys read historical fiction. I don't, I don't follow, not historical fiction, historical romances. And I don't think I watch a lot of channels that are just specifically historical romance. But let me know if you've read any of these, if you like them. I see that this one down here that I chose not to do, Not That Duke, because it's a number three. It's Eloisa James. And I have read some of Eloisa James's books. This one, this knockout, it sounds so good. I wanted to read it also, but that's Hell's Bells number three. And I was like, oh, and this one right here, The Dueling Duchess, Wicked Women of Whitechapel. That sounds so good as well. Number one, I love a good alliteration. So Wicked Women of Whitechapel is amazing. But this girl is in a circus sideshow. She is a shooter. That's not what it's called. What do they call her? a Marks woman in a circus. And so she shoots her gun. Anyway, <laughs> I I just think that some of these sound so good. And I'm like, eh, they're not the first book in a series. So I can't start them. I, I might read them. I'm probably going to put them on my TBR, but they're not going to be for this summer reading project. So that is going to do it for the romance. I will be back probably tomorrow with the fantasy and paranormal romance that I'm planning to read for the summer. So let me know down below if you have read any of these or if you have historical romances that are more like these that I talked about and they aren't like the Regency, you know, the Duke takes a wife kind of situation. I would love to know about those suggestions down below. And let's talk about these books or any books like this that you've read. Thanks for watching and I'll see you on my next video. Bye.